What's up, everybody? This is Trista. Please subscribe to this league. Tap the bell, comment below, and give us a like. Let's talk about my favorite topic around the NBA. The demise, the despair, the downfall of the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> there is no thing I enjoy more than watching them fall, Marty. I got on TikTok on Thursday night, and I said this. I said... Do you want to know how petty I am, how unbelievably spiteful and hateful I am? The Portland Trailblazers just went home tonight. Our playoff hopes are dashed, gone, out the window. Damian Lillard may be leaving, but I am still enjoying myself thoroughly because the Phoenix Suns are beating the shit <laughs> out of the <laughs> Los Angeles Lakers by almost 30. This is, by, this is at halftime I, I did this. And so... To me, the Portland Trailblazer fan, it's in my DNA to hate L.A. Fuck you for the Western Conference Finals that you stole from us. Probably a title, in fact, that you stole from us. The rivalry <laughs> that runs deep in my DNA. Fuck L.A. Fuck them hard. Fuck them slow. Fuck them shallow. Fuck them deep. Fuck L.A. Go home. Go fishing. Just like we're going fishing. Echoed. Echoed, echoed, echoed. Echoed. So, it was, we'll call it. Solace, a little bit of solace, a little bit of licking my wounds. If there's anything that I could have taken any pleasure from on the night that my Blazers went home, it's L.A. being exactly who I thought that they were, which were fucking frauds. I said it, didn't I say? I said, L.A., it's not your year. Pack it up. No expectations. Go you home. Did. You did. You did say this. Yeah. I mean, it, it it became pretty clear. I think LeBron leaving the bench in game six, that was kind of he He knew A.D. didn't have it, and he knew that I, I mean, in game five, when he left in game five, I, th I, I think he knew there's no way we're beating this team without AD. But, I have a question. Yeah. Why the fuck did they allow Anthony Davis to play in game six? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you could tell right away he was not able to go out and play basketball to his full capacity. And then like, just he was hobbling like so early on, like even before he went out. And then by the time it was like you could tell. <sighs> yeah, no, it was bad. I don't know. I mean, I guess he probably forced his way in would be my guess, but. Yeah, I don't know. Look dangerous. He clearly wasn't healthy, has not been healthy the entire year on and off. So many injuries stacking on one another that makes him a problematic person to put out on the court. A danger to himself, I would say. <laughs> he can't do that. Whoever allowed that should be fired because who knows how the potential damage he could have possibly done under the right or wrong circumstances, however you look at it. Right. I keep telling you folks, AD, and even Charles Barkley said it, AD's not a healthy player. He's no. 27 years old with a litany of injuries and a history when he should not have those at his age. Yeah, and that's a weird thing about his injury history is a lot of guys, they'll keep re-aggravating the same thing. He just has like four or five things that just, he's had four or five bad injuries. You know injuries, that, like, um, that game Operator? Yeah. Where there's little lights on the body that keep lighting up. That's Anthony Davis and his injuries. <laughs> yeah. That's him. I mean, he's got a lot. He's, gonna he's fuck got a lot. lot. And he's going to have more. So the Lakers should be concerned about preserving his health because they knew that they didn't have it. They shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. Because KD, AD, Clay, IT, Kawhi, Harden, Embiid, these team doctors don't give a fuck about you. They're going to let you go out there. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care about your long-term ability to walk. They care about you as an asset on the books right now to help us win games right now. That's all they care about. Yeah. Ask Kawhi about that. So, yeah, I'm licking my wounds and this is great. Let's find out what went wrong and what the path forward is. I think I know what went wrong. Who do you think? What do you think it is? <laughs> Just guess. Is it a person? or It's one thing? person. Magic. <laughs> well, I mean, if we're going to go back that far, maybe. Rob Palinka. Yeah, yeah, no, that's where I thought you were heading. Decisions more random than a tiddly wink board, honestly. Just, <laughs> I don't know where his head is. What brilliant moves has Rob Palinka made? Ooh, I mean. Oh, wait. Signed LeBron. That was a good signing. Let me ask you this. <laughs> do you think that had anything to do with Rob Palinka? Not little. It had zero to do <laughs> with Rob Palinka. It could have been you, Marty, as the GM of the Los Angeles Lakers. And he would have signed in L.A. Why? Because his wife wanted him in L.A. And I promise you she was not going to be cool with LeBron James's legacy tied to the Clippers. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. So, no. Okay. So, we'll give him... 
I don't know, 10% of the LeBron signing. Mm -hmm. Like it's basically his to not fuck up. Yeah. Cool. Competency. Awesome. All right. So then AD. Uh, yeah. AD does not come there <laughs> without LeBron and Rich Paul placing him there. Right. R Rich yeah. Paul told the world AD is not re-signing anywhere except for Los Angeles. Yeah, that one was handed to him. Yeah. Handed. On a and he still gave up a shit ton for him. So Correct. like it's not like he did a good job of taking advantage of the situation he either. Yeah. He did not take control and, and advantage of leverage that he had a lot of. Right? Right. So what's next? They signed KCP to a long term deal. In the off season, <laughs> L, unless Braun requested that, which I don't know, so I, I we'll call it. Who knows? They signed Montrez Harrell, the reigning six man of the year. Could have been a W, but then you look at the moves that they made after that. Yeah. They traded Javale McGee and his two second two second rounders into Mark Gasol. L. <laughs> Mark Gasol can barely walk, let alone get back on defense. He looked tough out there to watch yeah and he was the guy they were bringing in to because drummond was getting played off like he was he was their option correct <laughs> like, yeah. then they acquired another immobile big and andre drummond at the buyout deadline making things very complicated for montrez harrell and making mark gasol feel completely disrespected unimportant discarded hurt there was news that he might be let go altogether so you gave up two second round picks and JaVale McGee for a guy that you almost cut? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? That is insane. Rob Plinka said he would do the Andre Drummond move again and again in retrospect. Would you? I wouldn't. Yeah, no. <laughs> Bad quote. <laughs> now they're thinking about signing Andre Drummond to a new long-term deal. L. To the backcourt we go, Marty. Then they traded Danny Green in a first... A late first round pick for Dennis Schroeder. L. The Lakers tried to extend him right away for $21 million a year, which if they <laughs> would have done that and been successful in their efforts. L. Massive, massive L. When he said no and he underperformed, they then failed to trade him. For Kyle Lowry at the trade deadline. Why? Because they were unwilling to let go of Taylor Horton Tucker. L. It's real bad. That's a real bad L. Yeah. Oh, yes. They didn't bring back Rajon Rondo, who was a key piece of the Lakers title run. Low key, key piece. Jared Dudley said that the IQ of this year's Lakers team was not at championship level. And the reason why was because they didn't have Rondo. That is a direct quote. L. <laughs> I mean, now they will probably lose Dennis Schroeder for everything, for, for, for nothing. They will lose him for nothing. Paying a first rounder and Danny Green for a one year rental and a rental that was not exactly conducive to the team culture, we'll say. He did not fit in right away. Magic Johnson is exactly like all of us. He thinks Dennis Schroeder is... Not worth $21 million. <laughs> Pretty much his thought is exactly what my thought was. Who the fuck does Dennis Schroeder think he is? Who? <laughs> Who does he think he is? You know what? He's actually worse than I thought he was when I said that slanderous comment. He's actually worse yeah. <laughs> now than he was then. Magic says this. Quote, I don't think he's a Laker. I don't think, God, this is shade. I don't think he brings a winning mentality and an attitude we need. He failed. We should not sign him back. What, what's funny about players like him is that, like, they all, they were really into calling him, oh, he's our X Factor. He's our X Factor. Like, X Factor is not a good thing to really be because that means sometimes you play like shit and your team loses because of it. So, like, big facts. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd be a superstar. Right. Yeah. X, the difference between an X Factor and a superstar is consistency. Yeah. So, what is this losing mentality that you ask that Magic is so unhappy about? Well, one, Deciding to opt out of getting vaccinated and then contracting COVID by breaking protocol multiple times in multiple parts of the season. During a crucial stretch, he missed seven games. And then he bragged about the fact that he decided not to get vaccinated after the fact. Yikes. Or this one's probably more, uh, we'll call it critical. He f How about trying to force yourself into a greater role? Right when you got to the team, even though that the Lakers acquired you because you were the runner up as the sixth man of the year. 
And Ramona Shelburne reported that even though the Lakers had high hopes for Schroeder, the the relationship started off awkwardly when Schroeder stated publicly he expected to start, even though he had success off the bench with Oklahoma City as a runner-up in the six-man-of-the-year voting. And then it got worse with each contract extension he turned down. Right. How are we not talking about Rob Palenka? How are we not talking about <laughs> the fact that outside of LeBron and AD, which was 100% LeBron, he's been dog shit. Yeah. He has been these moves, when you add them up and you put them into a little box, you think, God, this guy's fucking terrible. This the, Has there been one great move? The only good move that I guess you could say was... Montrez Harrell, but but look, he was getting DNPs in the playoffs. He got DNPs yeah. in the playoffs, but also he now has a player option this year, and he's fucking gone. Alex Crusoe's <laughs> probably gone. So what are you really doing? Yeah, no. When you say it all in a row, it's uh, quite damning. Damning is the way that I would put it too. These are some of the worst moves that I've ever seen a title winner make in the off season. Like you're supposed to, like try to back up your title. They got significantly worse. Significantly, oh, and yeah. they actively got themselves worse. It's not like these guys just left; they traded him away. What the fuck are you doing, Rob Polinka? And everyone thought they got so much better. That was all the talk, like going into the season, was mm. like, "Oh, they're better now." And when you add it all up together, all of his decisions, they are very damning. But then you put more shit on this shit Sunday when Brian Windhorst just reported that if you think Lakers fans that the Lakers are making. Big moves in the offseason and getting a star? Think again. Oh, no. Rut row. Lakers are in trouble. This league. 